Welcome everybody, this is SharePoint Patterns and Practices uh, Community Call. This is the general SharePoint development a special interest group call. This is um, a, a community call which is meeting bi-weekly. And in this particular call, uh, we always kind of talk about or we are aligning this call to be more on a specific topic. So as an example, a few weeks back, we had a, a community call uh, where we covered uh, the hub sites end to end. So what does it actually mean? What's the PowerShell support? What's the API support for that? And now we will have uh, a kind of an end to end story on the site designs and site scripts uh, as we've been uh, evolving those uh, uh, lately as well. We did have covered those uh, partly already in the monthly community call, uh, in the April monthly community call. But as we 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 ask feedback during that call around, should we cover this stuff from a getting started perspective? Answer was yes, you should actually do that. Um, so uh, Sean Squires is joining right now on the call as well, and we'll do the live demo on, okay, how do I get started on the site designs and site scripts? And then we walk around the thinking and the future roadmap of that one as well. And then in the end, we have uh, Yannick uh, doing a demo as well. So basically uh, in the future, we are kind of realigning this, uh, this particular special interest group call more to be on specific, uh, let's say areas and topics. Uh, from two weeks from now, we're looking into doing a uh, uh, update on the PMP uh, site provisioning schema. We have quite a lot of uh, new changes over there and also the uh, the guidance around modernizing your existing classic sites. And we're going to talk about that one slightly later in the call as well. Um, but basically, we do have two different uh, special interest group calls, which are meeting bi-weekly. There's the SharePoint framework one, which concentrates on the client-side development. And then there's this one, which is more around general SharePoint dev, uh, anything around provisioning, branding, uh, new capabilities, and all that. Uh, AKMS SPPMP community uh, is a great tech community site where you can ask questions. Some people are helping you on those questions, hopefully. And then AKMS SP Dev Docs uh, is the official documentations. Now, what's the opportunity is to participate in this community. Uh, so if you're interested on doing any, uh, let's say, additional stuff uh, in the SharePoint Dev community, uh, you can absolutely do a, a technical demo uh, or show a, show a solution or a technical pattern in this community course or in a monthly community call. So you can reach out for me or Patrick or Bert or whoever from the uh, PMP team and say that actually you want to volunteer for doing a demo. Um, if you don't want to do a demo, you can still contribute on a kit. Uh, our, uh, we had uh, 340 uh, in the, or I think 340 individual contributors already in SharePoint GitHub organization, which is a pretty big number. Uh, but uh, you can basically do contributions on the documentations or samples. But if nothing else, please provide feedback. So use our uh, uh, issue lists, use our community channels to give us feedback on what works and what doesn't work. And we're highly interested on fixing if you run into issues or something isn't working properly for you, let us know so we're able to fix that rather than just smashing Microsoft and giving uh, feedback to somebody else. But give the feedback on Microsoft so we can actually fix that. Cool. Uh, so today, uh, like mentioned already, I'm going to do a few slides on the general announcements. There's certain new things which we announced in the Twitter and social media, just repeating those in this call. And then we'll jump into the uh, site designs and site scripts. So uh, from a getting started perspective. So Sean Squires is going to do kind of a quick intro from a slides perspective and also then live demos around how would I get started? How do I create my first site design? How do I edit that? And what is the end user experience? And, and what are the options over there? And then uh, we'll have site design studio, studio demo. This is an open source uh, project uh, from Yannick. Um, Yannick is, has built this awesome client side web port. It is based on SharePoint framework, but we're not going to deep dive on how it's actually being developed or implemented today, more on the capabilities, what it's actually providing and how it can be used. But obviously, it's also curious to see some level of a um, technical uh, nuances on behind of the uh, behind of the scenes as well. And then we should have time for Q&A. We promised to have time for Q&A in many of these calls, and then we always run out of time. So hopefully we'll get to the Q&A today. Um, if there's any questions, please use uh, the iron window uh, on this uh, iron window on the left side. Uh, well, depending on uh, which system you're using, and at those questions over there, uh, there's multiple BMP core team members in the call who can help on the questions as well. I will help on the questions as well, and Sean will uh, help on the questions uh, as we can. Um, 
Da, 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 da. Uh, oh, on the on the question with this, uh, sorry, this this question is around uh, language on the site design uh, from the Yannick. Uh, let's come back on that one actually when we have a demo uh, with uh, with the site designs uh, panel because I, I think Sean can more easily answer the question uh, from that perspective. Cool. So throwback Thursday. I showed this one for those who joined early on this call, uh, but this is something which I run into earlier today, which is actually kind of cool. Uh, so this is a real screenshot uh, of the material which I ran into earlier today. And this is material or a training package, uh, which I personally created when I uh, was working as a consultant in MCS back in 2007. Now it's 2018, so it's been, <laughs> been a while from this moment. Um, but there's quite a lot of interesting things uh, what has luckily evolved from this time frame. So this is something which we saw 11 years ago uh, and how we built uh, custom portals. So basically, we used Onet XML, we used uh, SharePoint Designer. Um, there was no actual tooling at the time. We used uh, make cap files, DDF files, uh, manifest XMLs, and all of that stuff. Uh, luckily, nowadays, when we are uh, defining, for example, what needs to get provisioned, um, we don't need to get to this level. We are only defining the additional capabilities, as an example, uh, on the announcements, and then we move into the Sean's uh, slides and all of that. So first of all, documentation and guidance, just a quick update on this one. Um, AKMS SP DevDocs official documentation in here. We now have new updated uh, welcome page, uh, so you can more easily find what's relevant for you. So uh, you can find these nice, nice links around setups, getting started, community links, and all of that. Um, so you can much more efficiently find the content what's relevant for you. There are certain areas where we still need to uh, evolve the documentation quite hectically uh, or update that up to date, uh, but we're working on that one as well. Uh, and we had 830,000 views in March, so apparently people are finding this, and that is a good news. So that's that's always a awesome thing. Now, if you're running into issues in SharePoint development, uh, we, I will keep on this slide on every single presentation. Uh, please, please, please go to SP DevDocs issues. Do not curse Microsoft by yourself uh, because we can't fix it unless you tell us what's wrong. Uh, so you should uh, always report to your findings. Um, and please, please, please submit an issue. We'll get back to you. We'll triage this uh, twice a week at least. And then we hopefully sooner or later get uh, your issue uh, fixed. Uh, it might be a question. It might be an issue. It might be a bug. Uh, it might be anything on a SharePoint development. Please use our issue, issue list uh, for getting support on that. Now, uh, before I go there, Philip is always asking that update on the <laughs> on the extension bug. Um, um, we have uh, progress on that one. Uh, it should be uh, getting fixed. We did have a uh, one version of the fix already available. Unfortunately, there was a small uh, thing which we needed to fix on top of it. So it should be getting uh, fixed super, super, super soon. Uh, I'll follow up on uh, again on today on the latest on that one. Um, one thing what we uh, uh, released uh, earlier this week, actually, uh, was 1,500 1, additional articles of SharePoint Schema. Um, and this kind of relates on the on the throwback Thursday, doesn't it? Um, which is slightly awkward now that I'm looking into the slides. But basically what we've done here is to take the old classic all of the feature XML, Schema XML, Onet XML documentation, and that's now available in the SharePoint DevDocs. Um, so if you find a bug, if you want to add a note for somebody, if you figure out that there's a hidden switch or attribute which or the attribute documentation is wrong, now you can actually contribute. You're able to submit a change or pull request uh, on this documentation, and that's really good. Uh, so uh, please have a look on this one. Uh, in the left menu, it says a schema documentation or something like that, uh, where you can all uh, find all of the uh, documentation for XMLs. Because the SharePoint, let's face it, SharePoint is all about XMLs, or was in the past especially, uh, maybe not that much in the future with modern sites and SharePoint framework. Uh, one more thing uh, before we go to the actual demo section which transquires uh, modernizing your classic SharePoint uh, sites guidance. First version of this one uh, has have gone live uh, actually a few days ago already, but we announced this one uh, and it will be announced by Office Dev uh, Twitter tweets uh, slightly later today. Uh, so we will keep on evolving this guidance. This is the V1 
of the modernizing uh, your classic SharePoint sites to the uh, modern uh, experiences, but we keep on adding additional guidance here. There is, for example, guidance around uh, already content around the groupification, um, whatever will be the official term for that operation. I know that I have an email which is defining what is the official term, and it's not groupify, it's something else. Um, but that capability is not yet quite available in SharePoint Online, but you can already figure out what, are, what is the support. There's guidance around uh, batch uh, groupification, so you are able to groupify multiple sites by executing on one PowerShell scripts and all of that. And we keep on, uh, like I said, we keep on evolving this one. So please, please, please keep, uh, give us feedback around this content as well. Good. Uh, development support for OneDrive and SharePoint multi-geo capabilities uh, is also available in the SharePoint dev docs. So if you go to dev docs, use the search, um, the, like geo or multi-geo, you'll find the relevant documentation on this one. This actually has existed in our documentation for a while, but we didn't announce it because the multi-geo capabilities were not announced uh, publicly. Now they are fully public, fully, well, they were announced, but they were not available publicly. Now they are available publicly, so the documentation uh, might be relevant for you. This means that there are different APIs to figure out, for example, that are you in the main tenant or the secondary tenant in the multi geo uh, deployment? Because you can actually have multiple tenants uh, kind of connected between each other uh, in the multi geo way. So, good documentation, uh, mainly from Bert Janssen, uh, around these capabilities in the dev docs as well. Uh... <laughs> Good. Quick update on the roadmaps, just to keep this slide on the on this uh, course as well. Not that much changes uh, since the previous weeks. Obviously, more site designs and site script actions went live a week ago, a week ago Tuesday actually, uh, and uh, Sean is going to cover those uh, slightly later today in the call as well. Um, the next one which will be available will be the Groupify APIs, um, so they will come to the preview relatively soon. Uh, there are some changes, for example, a API changes which are related on uh, GPR, GDPR. So we're adding some capabilities to match the GDPR requirements. Uh, more on those, for example, in the upcoming CSAM release, CSAM API release, uh, which will go live on next week's Friday. Um, and then there will be more news on SBC. SBC meaning the SharePoint Conference uh, 2018 in, in Las Vegas, which starts on 21st of May. So if you're curious on getting the latest news immediately, go to that conference. Now, on SBC, just a word of a warning, um, only if I understood correctly, only the keynotes and one or two other sessions will be streamed live. So the SPC in this time does not have live streaming, which is a pity, uh, which most likely will be evolved in the future things. Uh, and yes, Chris <laughs> Kent, there is a SharePoint conference. There is a SharePoint conference. So SPC 18 in Las Vegas on 21st of May, um, if you're interested on that. And this is kind of replacing, well, this is replacing the SharePoint spring moment. So in the past, for past two years, we had a May moment uh, within a SharePoint where we kind of announced, we said, released the videos and we announced the new upcoming capabilities. Now we will do that in SharePoint Conference SPC uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, obviously, we will release blog posts and documentation, uh, everything what we announced. So you don't, if you can't come to the Las Vegas or if you don't want to come, uh, come to the Las Vegas, I personally hate Las Vegas. Uh, so you can choose to also skip that if you don't want to go um, and you will get the right information as well. I don't quite feel comfortable in Las Vegas for reasons or another. It's, it's, it somehow magically feels fake. I don't know what is it. Uh, in, I don't know. Anyway, so uh, let's actually get to the demo and topics. And um, I'll, Sean, uh, will, do you want me to flip the slides or do, you can take over the... <laughs> Thanks, Terry. Oh, it is actually fake. I always thought that the Venetian uh, did the... Uh, never mind. So, <laughs> Sean? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I can take over. That's fine. That's okay. Fine. <laughs> so if you click the the button, um, it's just easier that way. That because then you you will be leading the discussion. I will be actually jumping in and asking questions if needed, like I typically do. So thank you. Okay. Oh, perfect. So I can just use the slides and then we can jump over to my screens yep. where I have Excellent. stuff going on. Wonderful. Good morning, everybody. Um, Sean Squires here. Uh, so. Thank you, Bess. So I wanted to take the time. Uh, Bess and I were talking. We thought it would be great to 
you know, with a lot of the uh, recent updates uh, in the site design and site script space, as Vanessa mentioned, last week at the monthly dev call, we uh, covered a lot of these uh, new uh, capabilities and script actions. But what we wanted to do today is, you know, take a little bit of a step back, a little bit higher step up, I guess, and uh, just sort of provide another broader overview for folks who aren't familiar with the site design and script uh, feature set and kind of go through some of the, you know, more of the soup to nuts. Uh, I'm not going to actually construct all the JSON files for you. We will rapidly run out of time, and I do not want to do what happened last time, which is we ran out of time for Yannick to uh, demo his very cool uh, tool, so want to make sure that we're doing time for that. So um, some of you have probably seen some of these things, but uh, hopefully this is some new material here for you guys. So let's talk real quickly about what they are and what the uh, framing and why do we build these things. Um, so site scripts and site designs, uh, oftentimes Vest and I refer to it as sort of the future of site templating, and it really borrows heavily from a lot of the uh, uh, patterns and practices that uh, we've established over the years in PNP. Uh, in the last couple of years, as we've rolled out uh, modern and fast site creation, uh, the next obvious response from the community was, well, this is great, but how do I extend these templates? How do I make my own templates? And one of the things we wanted to avoid was, you know, over the uh, history of SharePoint, we have made site definitions and templates and things like this about four, five, six, a hundred times. And we want to make sure that we're uh, learning from those uh, past efforts and approaches and really building on that model. And one of the things that was very intentional was when we uh, built the uh, new site templates, uh, the group connected team site template and the communication site template, we wanted to make sure that we were able to continue to update those in a meaningful way and for folks to take advantage of those new benefits and capabilities, which is something that's really lacking in the old save site as template model and something that PMP uh, addressed very well with the remote uh, site provisioning model. But we also want you to take advantage of and not have to build these full apps that cover the soup to nuts creation, you know, from the collection of the information to the creation and configuration of the site. So we wanted to be able to provide you a way to plug into um, uh, our existing provisioning flow that we uh, released, oh gosh, about a year ago. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that you could take advantage of that and plug into that. And so let me... Uh, well, I'll, I'll jump to slides and I'll some demos in a second. But what you can see here is we really wanted to make sure that we were giving you a way to build on top of those uh, templates. And the way we wanted to do that was really borrowing from the remote provisioning practice by doing post-creation configuration on the sites. Okay? And, oh, I forgot there's some... Uh, so we still have a lot of animations in here. That's cool. Okay. <laughs> so in a nutshell, uh, what's happening here is for those of you who are or are not familiar with uh, uh, our new site provisioning flow, and you'll see this in a second, um, in the panel, when you select a uh, team site or a communication site, we have a couple of out-of-box uh, site packages for communication sites, this topic, showcase, and blank. But with Team, you don't have that picker because we really only provide one option. But what you can do with site designs is when you publish them to your tenant, they get stored in a central location and are then available for all of your users in self-service site creation flow as an option to select. And then that configuration, that site design rather, has a script associated with it, and that script will be executed after the site has been created. Okay, and you'll actually see that we actually bring out a, uh, a panel and enumerate those steps. And we're um, just to anticipate a question. Uh, we've had some feedback from folks saying, "Hey, how do I find out what site designs have been applied to my site? What actions have been run?" And we are working on ways to be able to pull that information back up because it actually is being stored with the site after creation. And in fact, the flexibility of these things is we want to make sure that they adhere to certain principles that allow us to really tell a better story around updating and upgrading. So you can imagine that I can make changes to a site design, and I want to be able to push that change out or make it available, rather, to all the sites that are using that or have that site design applied. Um, I also want to be able to 
uh, maybe make changes in terms of who can see them. Uh, one of the things we introduced with this is the ability to scope these site designs. So if you wanted to build a site design that was specific for your HR department, obviously you don't want folks in finance or legal uh, inadvertently or intentionally using that site design because it maybe makes a list or sets a theme or brand or does something else with the site that's only relevant to the HR department. You can go ahead and scope that site design so that it actually only shows up for those users. And right now we support uh, mail-enabled security groups and individual users. We're also adding support for O365 groups as well. So what else happens here? Um, I think I jumped ahead of myself. Yeah, and so then the, the progress panel jumps out and those uh, changes actually get applied there. So what does a site script look like? Um, in a nutshell, it's a JSON file, but we're starting to bend the rules with that a little bit because uh, uh, in order to make it, uh, in order to get you the capability that you need to build the types of configurations that you require for your business scenarios, we are supporting things like um, setting views using CAMEL, uh, using field XML for some of the more complex column data types. So you can actually plug those into your site script. But as you'll see, a site script is really just a uh, JSON file of a bunch of actions. And those actions really are just defining all the configuration elements that you want to be able to do to that site. It might be defining site columns, adding those site columns or defining a content type, defining a list or a library. And we have the ability for you to actually go and update the out-of-box one that gets created with the template. So you don't have to create your own document library if you don't need to. You can just go ahead and modify the one that comes with the template. And then you can actually go and uh, apply all, and then what you do with that site script is you can then go and reference it with a site design. And we provide both REST and uh, PowerShell uh, for doing these actions. Um, we have not built a UX for this yet. But don't worry, that is on the radar to make it easier for maybe tenant admins, once they publish something, for site owners to uh, either select or modify these things themselves or even create themselves uh, for locally scoped groups, like let's say the HR department wants to make a modification. We recognize that we need to provide more UX and maybe even decouple or remove some of that dependency on the tenant administrator to manage these processes. But one step at a time, we're trying to move as quickly as we can in providing um, all the capabilities that you guys are uh, requiring and asking for. Uh, one question that we've gotten recently, uh, just while I'm on this slide, is you'll see in that upper, uh, uh, what is it, I'm still on my first cup of coffee, right, my upper right side, is you'll see those set of limits. Uh, we have put some limits on the scripts and the site designs. Um, one real quick question, it, if it wasn't apparent from the fact that there is both a site script, which is the JSON file, and the site design, which is the thing that materializes in the UX. So we decoupled these intentionally. Uh, you can imagine the possibility here is I can build a site script, let's say the one for HR, but I still have to do some other things. Uh, maybe I want um, to reuse some of those elements in that site script. Uh, maybe I want to have a list that's shared across uh, different departments. I could conceivably have a site design that invokes uh, that list uh, site script plus some HR specific stuff, but then I can reuse that list site script in the finance uh, site design. So the idea is that they're decoupled so that you can actually reuse or reassociate a site script with different site designs. Um, but given that, there are limits. Uh, we, you'll see that number 100, which might even be a surprise to VESA. Uh, in response to some uh, recent feedback that we've been discussing, uh, we are bumping the limit on the number of site scripts and the number of site designs you can have per tenant. Uh, those it was 30 last week, so, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, it was 30 site scripts and 20 site designs last week, yeah. and we just uh, uh, implemented a change to bump those to 100. We feel a bit more comfortable about making that change. Uh, the one that we're still working through is the next two. Uh, the 30 cumulative actions or the 30,000 character limit per site design is a somewhat, um, that's one that we have to, uh, we, we did that intentionally, guys. Um, it was largely to make sure that we weren't uh, uh, overburdening the web front ends. And one of the things that we're doing is we wanna make sure that in the execution of these things, we don't slow or compromise performance. And so we are looking at some more intelligent ways to uh, offload <clears throat> some actions to uh, as asynchronous and 
and or do some things where we can optimize the execution of these things. And we recognize it was great feedback that, like, wow, guys, you're giving us all these great new actions, but then you're still restricting what we can do. So we, we recognize that, and we are working actively on some uh, approaches that will allow us to uh, – really uh, relieve and increase those limits uh, without compromising the performance of your environment. Now, Sean, before you go to the next slide, okay, let's sure. let's stay on this line. There's quite a good set of questions on the on the call, so let's yeah, get this all, this, all of the clarified. So, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> all right, what did I miss? What's uh, the let's... so so? First of all, Vincent has a uh, interesting idea. This is quite advanced scenario, but I I do understand where he's coming from. Probably you do as well. So, could you somehow in future potentially pre-run provisioning post steps as in the site design and site script on a Planck site? And then you use that whenever you define your default uh, collaboration side or communication side. The whole point would be the, to take benefit out of the potentially on the fast provisioning, because if we would copy the existing site, which already has the configurations, and then we'll just uh, Right, them. right. So the, the idea there would be that there would be a bunch of stuff that would be consistent that you would want to apply to all the sites in general. Yep. Yeah, that's actually, uh, we are looking at ways right now where we can just sort of, like I said, offload some of those like steps and see if there are ways. We haven't really been thinking about pre-running, but that's an interesting idea. I'll um, make note of that feedback. Thank you. That would be kind of a having the, let's say, the, the clean default site template uh, option for every single tenant. So you can actually go and modify what is the default option for me, uh, and then that would be always the thing what's, what's the starting point. So, right, right, and then scenario. sort of offloading that from the after the fact. And, exactly. Yep, exactly. Those I like that. That's an interesting idea. Thank you. Cool. Uh, then Jonas uh, has a, a good question, a classic question, actually. When can I select a template uh, uh, which is getting applied when I'm creating the group from Outlook, Planner, Teams, and Streams, and so on? Yeah, great question. So when we are actually uh, actively working with uh, the other uh, uh, workload partners, uh, specifically uh, uh, Outlook and Teams, and uh, why you ask, Sean, because uh, that's actually, if you cumulatively look at Teams, uh, Outlook, and SharePoint, that accounts for like 95% plus of self-service site creation. So we want to make sure that we're going after those. But uh, in a nutshell, what the plan is, is we are working to you know, I, I don't think I'm telling you guys anything surprising. It's like, my gosh, you know, when my users, if I enable self-service site creation um, or, or group creation in my tenant, uh, every entry point for every workload is different. And we get that. That's because we're all different teams. And that's not your guys' problem. That's ours. So yeah. we are trying to ra rationalize that. One of the ways we're rationalizing that, rationalizing that is looking at ways that we can have shared controls so that we can ensure that things like uh, site designs are available from those other entry points. Um, one asterisk to that I will add, if you don't know, uh, just because I want to be sensitive to the time here, there is um, um, an option when you configure a site design, uh, you'll actually see it on the screen there. It's that very last item that says is default. There's a parameter where when you set a site design, you can actually set it as the default on either 64, which is the group connected team site, or 68, the communication template. And what that will do is it will then allow that site script, any site scripts that are associated with that design, to be run any time that default template is run. What this means is, since when you create something from Planner or Teams or whatever, they're effectively running that default template uh, through the, uh, uh, the API call, they're going to get that site design applied. So if there is a site design that you want applied, regardless of the entry point, that's sort of our intermediate way to at least get closer to that scenario. Yep, that that's cool. really good to get covered. So this default is, is really the key point here to, uh, to define site design getting applied regardless if the site is creating from the Outlook or Planner or Teams, just to repeat what Sean was just saying. Um, now, Christian has a question. Can we somehow disable out-of-the-box site designs? <laughs> Out of box site designs. Oh, you mean like I don't want blank or showcase or things like this? Yeah. Um, uh, how about this? It's in the backlog. We've gotten the feedback. Currently, no. Uh, Good feedback. Yes, it is. That's it is the great feedback. Uh, yes. Candidly, there's just some things that we need to change in order to enable that. But it's uh, something actually I was keen on when we were first designing the uh, uh, how we would plug into. Um, 
the provisioning flow. And so something we still are keen to uh, uh, address. So thank you for that feedback. I'll make a note of that. that it was asked again. <laughs> yeah. uh, quickly running through a few questions, then we need to go to the demo, so Yannick has <laughs> still some time, and then we'll yeah, come we, back. Yannick, don't worry, I am watching uh, the clock. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, capability f to not provision teams, uh, oh, sorry, not that one. Uh, I think that's a, just a general feedback from Kotum. Uh, so Benoit, would it be possible to select the managed path where sites is getting created? Team sites slash teams and communication sites slash sites. This is actually the default behavior, isn't it? So, uh, well, no, actually, uh, we only allow you to, this is a tenant admin setting of self-service site creation. Uh, I, I, I've gotten the feedback yet, yeah, unfortunately, um, uh, in the interest of time, definitely hear the feedback. Uh, the current configuration is you can only pick one managed path for self-service site creation. Yep. But we have gotten that feedback even from our own uh, internal IT department to say, please let us do what you just said. Com sites under sites path, teams under teams. So uh, we are looking at doing that. Um, in the future, I just don't have an ETA of when we'll make those changes. It'll probably be something that will happen as we make continue to make updates in the modern uh, admin center experience. Good. Uh, and then Dennis has a question around, uh, can we add that template to general group creation? Uh, and the answer is yes, that's the is default uh, option in the in the site designs. Now, at this point, uh, let's let Sean to go to, uh, through the slide and then uh, do a live demo. And we'll should have time in the end for Q&A. So. Awesome. Okay, super. So uh, let's see. Uh, real quickly, uh, I'm not going to spend much time here because there's lots of documentation about all this. But in general, this is the set of uh, the cumulative set of supported site script actions, and you can see a lot of this in the, the JSON schema. The documentation is out there, um, aka.msp site designs. Uh, you can also get a whole bunch of other stuff, including tutorials, links to samples. But really, the script actions that we're going after are largely in response to what you guys are telling us what we need, what you need, plus sort of the obvious things like we know that uh, having lots of capabilities to configure lists and libraries on a site are super important. Being able to do things like branding and configuration of the information architecture, super important under the site setting. So we allow you to manipulate the site nav, be able to apply themes, set logos. Uh, quick uh, asterisk on set logo. There is uh, an interesting uh, caveat to that action. It only works on uh, the communication template. This is largely because with a group connected team site, the site logo is actually getting stored in exchange. And so we are working through to solve that so that the action will work on both templates. Sorry for that inconvenience. Um, regional settings, that was one, an external sharing capability. Those were some options, uh, new script actions that we released last week. And then finally, those last two, super powerful, uh, trigger flow. Uh, I'll let uh, Vesa make the additional plug for this one. But the cool thing about that one is it allows us, as many of you are familiar with, for all the things that we don't necessarily support or yet support natively in the product, uh, or if you have custom solutions that you've already built or invested in and want to be able to uh, uh, still take advantage of, Trigger Flow is your friend. It allows you to do, uh, take advantage of Flow uh, to actually call an Azure function or do all those uh, awesome things you can do in Flow. And uh, there's definitely some more work we want to do here because right now what we do, and we've, I've gotten this feedback, is it's like, hey, great, we've uh, triggered the Flow, we're done. But maybe your solution isn't done running. And so uh, we've gotten feedback to say, hey, can you please give us a way to sort of pause that uh, that action being completed or at least give us the ability to alert the site owner um, that there's still some other things happening and we are looking at ways to make that possible. I'll probably have more to share in the next month on that. Uh, finally, with hub sites rolling out, uh, we do have an action where you can join a hub site and that's pretty cool too. You can actually have a site get created and automatically join uh, a pre-created hub and then get all the benefits that it comes with that, like the application of a theme and, you know, the association and all that. So that's pretty cool. And then finally, we're doing a bunch of stuff in response to feedback that we've gotten largely from this community around uh, really making uh, uh, SPFX solutions and extensions uh, more readily available uh, through site scripts. So, um, Unfortunately, Vess and I were really hoping to be able to demo one of the new extension, uh, sets of extension actions, but uh, unfortunately, a little bit more testing is required on that one. So I hope to come back and uh, share that with you in the next couple of weeks or best I can in the next few weeks. Super close. So close, but we'll, we'll show it in the upcoming calls. So. Okay. so close. Yes, yes. All right, let's get to some demos because I think some of this is like you guys have heard all this before. You're like, Sean, move on to something. <laughs> 
as well toad all right let's see let me know when you and, and sean repeat is the king for learning anything in technology repeat, repeat yes repeat. yes <laughs> all right so because actually it's a great segue that's that because what i'm going to do is i'm going to repeat something that i have probably shown several of you before but i think it's important because it drives a lot of the capabilities uh, home uh, that we were just talking about in some of these new site script actions. So here I am on SharePoint Home, and you will see that there is, um, uh, when I go to create a site, this is where those site designs start to show up. All of a sudden, there's a picker in the team site, uh, create site panel, and you'll see that there are a couple of new additions here. And what's very cool is these things are being defined um, uh, I, I've already defined the site scripts and created the site design so that they show up here. In the purp for purposes of time, I'm just going to run through one or two of the, a couple of these, and then I'll show you some of the uh, code. This uh, custom site design, what's interesting about this one is it's actually using that trigger flow action to uh, actually tweet out that I've created the thing and also write some data back to a SharePoint list. That SharePoint list was pre-created, and you'll see I have it over here. And so I have a list here that's essentially a way for me to track how many people have used this site design and what they've created. We've made some uh, recent updates to the trigger flow action to pass along some additional site uh, information so we can get things like uh, who it was created by, their email, uh, a description for the site if it was provided at a creation time. So let's go take a quick look at that and see what that looks like. Uh, what is today? Let's, let's call this 419B. Just for just in case. Yes, exactly. Because I want to have to go clean all this up. <laughs> yes. Because quite a few other people are using this demo environment. That was, by the way, super fast again on site creation. Good job on that one. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. That's, that's awesome. All right. So watch what happens. Uh, oh, nothing happens. Oh, what's going on here? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Before we talk about a demo fail. Wow. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, you were too fast. I was too fast. Well, what just happened there? That, I actually tried to even warm up some of this stuff just to make sure that there wasn't anything strange going on. What just uh, happened? You definitely there? got this recorded, so all good. All good. <laughs> try that again. For, did I do B? No, I didn't. Yeah. Let's try C. There we go. All right, so demo, custom site design. I want you guys to see a progress panel here. <laughs> Come on. Wow. Well, this is disappointing. I don't know what's going on with this site. All right, we're going to move on. Um, <laughs> so, so within two weeks, we'll have a new uh, community call, and we'll cover site designs. No. Wow. <laughs> okay, let's, let's hope my other environment's working a little bit better. All right, so uh, I think I showed you what was happening here, and then what, what you can see here is that what I was going to show you was that actually I've got tweets being created, and you know, so that's just taking advantage of a lot of those capabilities that, uh, you know what, let's try one more. I want to just see if this is going to work. I have a hub here, uh, and I, this hub actually has a predefined, uh, it, well, it has a theme that's been assigned to it, and you'll see that it's the Contoso HR theme. And when, for those of you who are uh, still learning about hubs, one of the cool things that we do with hubs is when you associate a site to a hub, a couple things happen. Uh, but two things in particular is, the associated site gets the hub site nav, and it also inherits the hub site's theme. So I've written an action here, um, which will actually join the site to the hub after it's been created. And now I'm feeling a bit dubious about this environment. I don't know what's going on here. So uh, disclaimers aside, let's see, uh, uh, joining work one, okay. So I've created a site that the intent is it's going to be joined to the hub. <clears throat> Crossing fingers. Really? Yeah, you broke it. This I did. Is, I broke it. So this is, I have to say, this is not a normal production tenant. This is something completely different. So, but you clearly, clearly broke yeah, it. Yeah, so. I did. I did broke it. Okay, let's 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 bag this environment. This one is not working for us. All right, we're gonna. 
We're going to move along here. Um, let, let's actually be in the interest of, uh, because of time, I want to make sure I only got a few more minutes here. I do want to show you guys what the script looks like and what the general process is of getting started. Because that's what we promised we were going to show you today. And then I'll show you what this stuff looks like. So what I have here on the screen, I uh, hope you can see this all right, it's just a really basic uh, script file that is doing a couple of things. What I'm doing is I'm really just every, everything I'm doing is I'm designating all my actions. What are the configuration steps that are going to occur here? And everything is in sort of this, uh, you know, verb and parameter model. Uh, so you'd specify with a site script action as a verb, and then you have a bunch of uh, parameters or sub actions that you can associate with that. So in this case, uh, I'm creating a list, and in this case, it's going to be a custom list. I'm using template type 100. And now I'm defining a bunch of sub-actions. In this case, I'm setting things like its description, the fields. And we have added, you'll notice that here I'm defining just list level, uh, list fields, but we can now support the creation and addition of site columns and even content types. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So I'm defining this list. I'm adding a bunch of fields to it of different data types. You'll notice that we have certain parameters, like I can set display names, and I can even specify whether it's required. We have some other properties, like enforcing unique values or adding to the default view. All these parameters are uh, outlined or described and uh, detailed in the JSON schema documentation. You'll also see here I'm using template type 100 to create a library. In this case, I'm not overriding the document library that comes with the template. I'm creating a new one, adding some additional fields and different data types, notice Boolean, note, user, number. For some of the more complex data types, uh, we will eventually support these with JSON, but uh, for now, you can use field XML, and I'll show you an example of what that looks like. And then I'm taking these two uh, uh, lists, and I'm adding them to the site now, and then I'm also applying a theme. So before, let me quickly show you what that apply theme looks like. Um, if I go to one of my sites here, You'll see that in uh, to change the look, I've already uploaded a company theme. The apply theme action is intended to work with uh, company themes that have been uploaded to the gallery and are available for all tenants. So if you wanted to apply a SharePoint theme, you would actually have to take like this orange theme and upload it as a one of your company themes, and then you'd be able to reference it from the script action. If folks have feedback about, hey, they wish that that worked a little bit differently, we'd love to hear about that. But largely, that's how the feature works right now. So you'll see that I've already uploaded a Contoso Explorer theme to this tenant. So now I'm able to reference that theme in this apply theme action. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, grab all this data. And let's jump over here. And you'll see that I've already, actually, let's get away from that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and copy all this into a parameter. And now I'm going to go and add this as a site, uh, as a site script first. So I'm going to go and use uh, my PowerShell add SPO site script. And for its, uh, for its title, the two, the two required fields where I need a title. Oops, i got to be able to spell uh, new recipe. And then I need to pass in the content. And in this case, it's what I just put into that variable. Okay, just like that, I just created a site script on my tenant. And you'll see that I got an ID here. So now that I have that site script, I can go ahead and create a site design. Now the site design has a few different uh, uh, available parameters. So real quickly, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, SPO site design. And I'm gonna use, uh, let's see, for title, so that, because this is actually what shows up in the uh, uh, provisioning flow, uh, demo, for 419, and then I need to give it a template. Oops, 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 oops. Uh, let me give, what am I doing? Sorry. All right, I need to give it the site script. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in the ID of that site script. Uh, the other thing I need to do is I need to specify what the uh, template ID is. Um, and in this case, I'm going to apply it to the team site template, okay? And that's all I'm going to do. So all I'm doing is I'm giving it a title, I'm associating it with that site script that I just created, and then I'm assigning it to the uh, uh, team site template. And now it's created. So let's go take a look. <clears throat> so now if I go back to my environment here, and I open up this list, 
you'll see there it is. It's been added, okay? So let's go ahead and run this real quick. Let's see if we have any better luck with this. Otherwise, this is going to be a complete wash here with no progress panel at all in any of my demos. That would be unfortunate. Vanessa, I did. I broke it somehow. <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's <laughs> give Yannick the stage. Uh, you, but now we know how to actually add that stuff in. Uh, <laughs> no idea what you've done there. <laughs> yeah, everything was just working like a few minutes ago here. Boy, yeah, I want to make sure Yannick has the time to show us his very cool tool here. So if you guys... Uh, what? I, why don't we turn the floor over to Yannick, and I'll see if I can go quickly refresh the yeah. environment. Let's do that. Let's do that. All right. Cool. Uh, Yannick, uh, you can just uh, start sharing and take over the presentation. Yeah. Can you hear me? And microphone yeah. works still. Yeah. Great. Yeah. It works. It's quick. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay. So I'm sharing my screen. If uh, anyone can see me, can see what is shared. Not yet, not yet. Starting loading three dots. And got it. Did you get it? Yep. Okay. Uh, so, first of all, a little bit of intro. Uh, so, my name is Yannick Penvo. I'm a SharePoint and Office 365 consultant. I, uh, I am from Belgium and I work in Luxembourg. You can reach me on Twitter on, on my blog. Just that's it. So I will uh, talk about the, the, this web part that I built, uh, actually. It is a SharePoint framework web part uh, built with React that actually allows you to manage site design and site script uh, without having to write JSON. But you can do it as well. We will see in a minute. So here it is. On the, the first page of this web part, you have actually to select if you want to manage the site design or the site script. And on the site designs, you see that I have uh, listed the custom site design that I have in my tenant. So I have uh, three different uh, designs that I can edit the properties. I can change and update the title, description. Uh, and uh, bind it to the to the template, the base template that I want. I can delete one, for example. So regular uh, CRUD operation on the uh, on the side designs, and I can create another one here. So let's call it PNP design. Um, for demo, and I. Um, associated with a team site and I can also um, just take the link uh, update the preview image and nice. save it <clears throat> and if I go to the SharePoint welcome page here I should see it I hope your progress panel works. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> At least it this one works. Uh, <laughs> it, nice. it is on an uh, European tenant, so I hope it will. So, uh, so that's the thing, and we also see that we can associate the script here. Uh, as uh, Shen said, uh, you have the site design, and you have to associate the site script to it. Uh, but we will see in a moment. So now we can see that we uh, are able actually to also manage, delete and edit the properties, etc., of the the site script, and I can create a new one. And so uh, let's call it uh, Superman site script. Uh, yeah, demo here and. I have this web part that allows me actually uh, to write JSON on the right or directly add uh, from a UI here. So I have a picker. Uh, by the way, I will probably have to, to implement some scrolling because the the, the actions are the number of actions. Uh, we keep adding more. That's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
so let's start with a simple one, the add and navigation link. And you see that I have this graphical box here that allows me to uh, set the parameters for the action. And let's, uh, yeah. And you see that uh, when I uh, update the thing, the JSON here on the right is actually updating. Um, but the other way around, I can uh, do it directly in JSON, and it will uh, refresh the UI. So if I, when I start typing here, you see that actually since the, the JSON is not valid, the UI cannot be rendered. So I can start typing a verb, and you see the intelligence uh, promote, pro propose the, the, the available choices. So I will do the same thing, the had nav link. And since I have selected the verb, I can have with the intelligence the appropriate argument as well. And as soon as I have all the, the, the required properties, the UI renders. And so, yeah, if I uh, uh, update the URL here, come, example. And um, here it is. So, um, based on this, uh, I can now uh, save the, the site script. And if I go back to, to, to the scripts page, I see it. I can reopen it and uh, re-render. OK. Um, OK. Uh, I can add some. Uh, obviously, I can add every of the every every actions, every available actions here, and I can, for example, apply a theme. And initially, the work part was meant to be f uh, fully generic, but uh, since we are in a in a in a SharePoint web part, we have access to the tenant and we have access to all the information we need, for example, the list of teams, the list of upside, etc. So I actually implemented uh, a setting. Then if I can edit it, yeah. And publish. And for example, if I want to add a team now, I can apply a team and it will show me the available themes on my tent. The same actually for the, the, the upside action where I have the available upside on my tenant. And the same also for the new Star SPFX solution where I have the available solutions. That was my tent. We released this last week, so that's cool. Yeah, that's super cool. Um, so here it is. Um, there are numerous actions that should be uh, maybe um, handled. Uh, the, the, the handling of, the, of some action should probably be improved. For example, this one, yeah, you have to select the text for uh, every, every argument, but it will probably come up in, uh, in the next weeks. Um, so another uh, useful thing is that you can actually just reorder the, the action directly from the UI here. You can c collapse everything and expand everything and uh, edit the properties of the, uh, of the site script as well. OK. Um, and another good thing that uh, I think could be useful uh, is that maybe you want to, to start from uh, an existing sample. So, I could go here on the, on the PNP GitHub uh, sample repository and take this, for example, this one here, the create, uh, the create formatted list, and copy paste the, the whole thing directly here, and everything is rendered already. That's so cool. I can change the thing. Notice maybe this one. It is, since it is uh, a complex JSON object for the, the, the field custom formatter, uh, I <laughs> do not do anything with, uh, with, with this thing. Probably go back to the, the Chris Kent uh, current formatter web part 
and ju uh, just take the JSON and stick it in the, the JSON here. Yeah. Okay, uh, what else do I have? Yeah, um, another thing, another thing is that, uh, for example, I want to, you notice that we have the create a list uh, here, and we have sub actions where you can set the titles, the description, how the fields, etc. So everything is uh, working well, but it might be actually useful to start from an existing list. So let's do that. Let's create a list, a list of heroes, and okay, create. And from the UI, from the standard SharePoint UI, I can add new fields, uh, hero name, okay, um, add uh, uh, this song, okay. Important and, uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, another... Uh, cho uh, choice field here uh, with uh, weaknesses, for example, choice, yes, um, uh, I don't see uh, multiple, but whatever, uh, okay, uh, so, great night, and uh, other, okay, so just save it, and actually it is, um, Another uh, settings that I implemented afterward, uh, so I will activate it here. Okay, publish. And uh, from the Superman size script, I want to add a list, so create a list. And then here I can select if I want to create an empty one or an existing one. And from here, I can select my list of, of hero list and say OK. And I have the action and the fields added to it as an uh, as a XML. So here, here we go. We have our script. And hopefully, it will work. But first of all, we have to actually associate it with the, with the site design. And um, associate this here. Save it, and hopefully I will have the panel working. Uh, just refresh to be sure. And while Yannick is doing that one, just double checking, Sean, you need to drop on one minute, right? So, and if you do, don't worry oh, about I it. Should. We do have webcasts uh, around the site design, so I can reference that in the video recording. So, uh, even oh, though. thank you. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. I. Got the environment refreshed. I don't know what happened there. Might have been just a network hiccup. But uh, I think I would just end while Yannick's doing that. Is just uh, yeah, be sure to check out the documentation if this is somewhat new to you. We try and keep it up to date and fresh with all the new actions and the samples that Yannick was just illustrating in his demonstration. Thank you for the time. Yeah. Okay. Trying. Cross some fingers that Yannick's demo is, is working properly as well. And I have the panel. <laughs> That's what I have the panel. Uh, but we have uh, uh, errors actually here. Type, but is it fine? Um, don't know. I don't know what happened with the site script. Uh, maybe I did not uh, fulfill the properties. Probably. Uh, probably, yeah. Ah, yeah, it's this thing. <laughs> I remember. Probably it's not a valid URL. But, yeah. yeah we, uh, we should probably give you more uh, error checking when you're doing the, Java, the JSON before you uh, yeah. publish. So but the, we put error handling in the progress panel, but we're working on adding more yeah. logging and error handling to the actual uh, scripts themselves. But the, the yeah. actual list, however, was created, so that's that's yeah. cool. So exactly. it only exactly. works on adding the navigation links. Yeah, so. yeah. and uh, the the web part doesn't work with the views uh, currently, but I plan to do it as well. But I, I have the hero name, the S strong, and the weaknesses with okay. the choices. Cool. Nicely done. This is very cool, man. Yeah. So there it is for me. 
Thank you, Yannick. Uh, and we did fail on the Q having the Q&A time of the day as well. So we're not going to move to Sean. Sean needs to move to another call. Uh, but that's super, super, super cool uh, demo. Thank you, Yannick, on that one. And please have a look on the on the implementation. It is in the SP Dev Solutions, uh, which is a GitHub repository where we have more polished and fine-tuned uh, uh, samples uh, for SharePoint framework. And these are, Yannick is evolving that web part directly underneath there. So um, you probably want to go there and every now and then have a look on how if Yannick is, is releasing a newer version, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, and obviously, if you're, if, if you, sorry, Sean, do you want to? Yes, I was just going to add one real quick thing before I drop. One, thanks, everybody. And two, uh, Vesa and I put out a blog post last week with the, the spring updates. We added a bunch of, uh, answered some questions there. I would encourage folks to use that tech community post to uh, leave us any other questions outside of just contacting us directly. So, um. Yes, So, and that's a good point. I'm going to paste in that uh, actually in here uh, rather than sending an email <laughs> because yes. our inboxes do not unfortunately scale. Uh, let me add uh, a link to that uh, uh, blog post. And then uh, I think... We unfortunately run out of time for additional Q&As. We seem to be having this theme, unfortunately, quite often. But if you have any questions uh, which we didn't answer, please, please, please add those questions in this uh, blog post uh, in the tech community underneath the SharePoint. Um, and we'll follow up on the on the question. We'll make sure that it's getting answered. And the reason why we rather want you to add a comment on this article is that then the other people can see the answer as well. Uh, and that scales rather than uh, answering on the questions uh, one by one which doesn't really scale. Um, and now Sean had to drop to another call. But uh, I think that's it uh, for this one. We do apologize on, on slightly going again late. We missed uh, probably some of the questions. Please use the blog post uh, and comment section for adding those questions. So we will absolutely follow up on those uh, as well. And please uh, give us feedback around the documentation. Um, and if you find any issues, go to the issue list as well and let us know. But thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you for your contributions. Thank you, Yannick, for absolutely brilliant work uh, on the, that web part. Thank you. Uh, really, really cool stuff. Um, uh, on top of all of the other stuff, cool stuff, what Yannick has been doing also on the SharePoint Framework side. Um, if you're interested on a SharePoint Framework, that web part is, by the way, a super cool implementation as well. So the source code is available uh, in the official SharePoint organization. Um, so have a look on that one as well. Um, uh, so great work in general. But thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, video will be available in the YouTube channel within 24 hours. Uh, thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend. We still have a Friday to go. Uh, some might have vacation, whatever. Uh, bye bye. bye. <laughs> Cheers. Bye. <laughs>